Artificial intelligence, or AI, as a field, has a serious problem with hype, leading to overexcitement and even fear. The most notable example of this hysteria is the so-called war with automation. This refers to the idea that we should be resisting innovation because it's taking over, automating all processes and making humans obsolete. I'm an assistant professor in computer science and engineering at the University of Nevada. I've heard all the hype, and I'm here to tell you, in the war with automation, I'm betting on humans. We're adaptable, creative, and empathetic in ways that AI simply can't be. AI is everywhere. But there's a serious disconnect between the research community and the general public on this topic. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to use this hand to represent humans and all that we're capable of, and this hand to represent AI and its current capabilities, this is where most people think AI is. They think we're just steps away from AI being as capable as humans. But if I were to show you where we really are, I'd have to take this hand, representing AI, and put it on Mars. That's the disconnect I'm talking about. It all stems from a simple misunderstanding. Within the research community, the limitations of the technology are well understood. The problem with AI is all the terminology is in English. We use words like learn, train, and understand, quite liberally. Everyone here is probably pretty familiar with these terms in everyday life. But in the context of AI, they have very technical definitions. Learning is solving an optimization problem. Understanding is building a mathematical representation for some kind of input. And training is identifying a function, solving for the parameters of that function that map inputs to outputs in some high-dimensional space. Yikes. I bet you can imagine why we use these more intuitive words rather than their technical definitions. This misunderstanding has led many people to personify AI, giving it human characteristics, when it's really nothing like us. We call Siri her, and we say things like, Siri thinks I said. There's another one of those words, think. What's the technical definition for think? What does it mean for an AI agent? like Siri, to think. Absolutely nothing. There is no equivalent technical definition for think because AI is not capable of thinking. All this personification has led to some public concern over the advancement of AI. Many people believe we're at war with automation, resisting its inevitable takeover. As someone who works in the field of AI, believe me when I tell you that AI, it's just math. And there is no way that calculus can capture all that it means to be human. Math? Math isn't going to replace us. Humans are amazing. We're able to adapt to new situations and environments as they present themselves. We're creators, inventing new things every day. And we can empathize such that we understand what it means to walk in someone else's shoes. AI can't do any of those things but it can enable us to fully leverage these uniquely human capabilities. AI is not adaptable. An AI agent is created for a specific purpose, like virtual assistant in the case of Siri. It can't adapt to new situations in the way that humans do. Siri can't troubleshoot problems with you. You can't teach it new things. If it doesn't know how to do it, it just Googles it for you. Humans, on the other hand, are an incredibly adaptable species. There's always been the threat of automation replacing us, but we've adapted, and I would say we've thrived. The internet was considered one of these threats not too long ago. But the widespread availability of the internet in the early 2000s made it possible for more people to find work online. New jobs were created. This technology increased access to the world for those who needed it most. If you didn't have reliable transportation, or you had young children and you couldn't afford childcare, you could now find work online. As technology and AI advance, more opportunities open up because of our adaptability. There are many jobs that exist today because of technology that didn't exist even 15 years ago. Uber driver is a great example of this. Because we've had taxi drivers for what seems like forever, but technology has enabled many people to be part-time drivers using their personal cars. 
other jobs that didn't exist 15 years ago. Social media managers, machine learning engineers, cloud infrastructure architects, and many more. If somebody told your parents or your grandparents 20 years ago that someday people would make a full-time living creating videos and posting them online, <laughs> they would think you were nuts, and understandably so. <laughs> But that's exactly where we are today. We have full-time YouTubers. We can't possibly envision the jobs of the future. That was true 15 years ago and 50 years ago. But we've adapted to our new circumstances and created something from nothing. Technology and AI automate menial tasks, freeing us up to do more creative work. AI is not creative. Siri tells jokes. Siri doesn't make jokes. AI doesn't create anything. The engineers and scientists that build AI do. Humans are incredible in that we're never satisfied. The slightest inconvenience, and we'll create something brand new. AI has no concept of inconvenience. Innumerable innovations come from this creativity, including new technology and applications of that technology, like the 3D printer. In the 80s, the inventor of the 3D printer was working at a company that made tough table coatings using UV lamps. And he thought to himself, hmm, I wonder if I can use this same process to create prototypes from computer designs. 3D printers today are being used to do just that and so much more. They print casts for broken bones, prosthetics for amputees, and research is even being done to print organs for those in need. Organs! All because the inventor of the 3D printer was tired of creating computer designs and sending them off to be fabricated by somebody else. Netflix is another great example of this creativity, born from simple questions like, why do I have to go to Blockbuster to get a movie? <laughs> what if I don't have what I'm looking for when I get there? 23 years after its founding, Netflix has completely changed the way we consume media. We have every movie and TV show at our fingertips. We don't have to run to the bathroom during a commercial break. Content fits into our schedules, not the other way around. All because the founders of Netflix didn't want to have to leave their house to be entertained. So they created something that never existed before. And now, it's commonplace. Human connection and human struggle incite this creativity and innovation. Two things that AI knows nothing about. AI has no empathy. It has no feelings whatsoever. I'll let you in on a little secret. When Siri says, I'm sorry, it doesn't mean it. <laughs> Humans, on the other hand, have an incredible capacity for empathy. Our ability to empathize allows us to connect with others and drives our adaptability and creativity. Innumerable innovations come from this empathy, like FaceTime. FaceTime popularized the everyday use of video chat technology. One of the drivers of the technology was to allow people to share in big moments from far away. One of its creators did just that not long after the launch, FaceTiming with his mother-in-law when his daughter was born. FaceTime took video chatting from a workplace tool to a personal application that could be used anytime, anywhere. All because we have a shared understanding of what it means to miss out. FaceTime made distance disappear, allowing people to connect all over the world like never before. Siri has been my example throughout this talk. Siri and other virtual assistants rely on speech-to-text technology. Virtual assistants are in our cars and our homes, adding appointments to our calendars, making phone calls, and even setting the thermostat. One of the first applications of this technology was for people with disabilities to use their personal computers with only their voice, allowing them to use voice commands to access folders and applications just as anyone would with a keyboard or mouse. Asking Siri or Alexa to check the weather or set a reminder for us has become a part of our everyday lives. But why does this technology exist? Because we care about each other. And our ability to empathize means we want to alleviate suffering. Without empathy and human connection, we wouldn't have many of the innovations we take for granted today and the world so desperately needs. Our unique ability to adapt 
create and empathize is why I'm betting on humans in the war with automation. AI is a tool, a very powerful tool, but that's all it is. It'll continue to automate menial tasks in our everyday life as it has already done. Imagine all that you could do if your day wasn't filled with these tasks, like driving, grocery shopping, and cleaning. I told you that AI has a problem with hype, leading to this kind of hysteria and overexcitement. Let me tell you what you should be overly excited about. The freedom that AI gives you to be everything it isn't. Thank you. <laughs>